Hey everybody, this is Kenny C from Chilling with Jeff and Kenny C. And I bring you an exclusive interview. My guest at this time is a comedian originally from Georgia, now resides in California. She's preparing for the Chicks with Mike's show, which is this coming weekend. I'm joined with Bobby Oliver. She's joining me right now. Hello. Hey, what's up? I'm doing real good, and uh, thank you for joining me for this interview. And uh, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to Natasha Young. Uh, She's going to be a part of that show. It's her first pro comedy show, and uh, she told me about you, and uh, that's pretty much how this interview came about. So uh, shout out to Natasha, and uh, good luck. And uh, good luck. I just saw her yesterday. She is hilarious. Uh, I've known her. For about a year now, and uh, she just started the comedy thing, and uh, she's very excited for what she has told me. So uh, I'm very happy for her. Um, yes, you are. All right. So, how did you? What made you decide to be a comedian? Well, um, I grew up in Covington, Georgia, where the Dukes of Hazard was filmed, and uh, I was I had. I guess what you would call an unhappy childhood. And, but I was just fell in love with the comedians on The Tonight Show. So I would stay up late at night with my daddy watching uh, Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. And it just, just, comedy just seemed to make everything better. And it just, I was such like a comedy fan for so many years and just never really considered that I could be a comedian myself, although I did start doing theater when I was 14 years old and started acting in high school. But I was more like a comedy fan. And then I saw, um, in a short period of time uh, when I was a teenager, I saw Roseanne and Brett Butler both on The Tonight Show. And that just really um, spoke to me and said, hey, you know, you can do this too. So I got the bug. And when I was 19 years old, um, I was in um, I was in college at LaGrange College on a, um, a theater scholarship and a theater program there. And I wanted to do comedy, but no, no, the clubs would, in Atlanta would let me go up because I wasn't 21 yet. So I just started a stand-up comedy group at my college and just started producing my own show there until I turned old enough to get into the club because it was something I really wanted to do. So I just didn't want to sit around and wait for somebody to uh, hand it to me. I decided to just figure out a way to do it myself. Do you remember the first ever comedy routine you ever had? Yes. Yeah. I do. It was very, uh, um, it was very much from the perspective of a 19-year-old girl. You know, it was a lot about um, dating and boys and classes at school. And um, but I remember it was just, you know, it went great. Even the first night, the first time I ever did it, it went great. And I just, I knew that was for me from the, you know, from the start. And that was uh, 24 years ago in 1988. And um, I've been doing it ever since. Did you ever got nervous leading up to that first ever uh, routine, being in front of people and and, uh, things of that nature? Yes, as a matter of fact, I get nervous every time, and so do most comedians. Like, I think it's a misconception of people who aren't comedians that think, oh, I can never do comedy because I, I have stage fright or I get afraid and... You know, they look at people who speak for a living like me, and they think, well, you know, they must not ever get scared. That's why they're able to do it. But we're always scared. That's just part of the, that's part of comedy. It's the duality. It's part of the, you know, one of the many yin yangs in comedy is that, you know, we have to go up and speak in front of people, but we're terrified. But what, what the difference between comedians and regular people is that we're scared, too, but we just do it anyway. So that's how you learn that you can do things that scare the crap out of you, uh, and you find out that that you get such an exhilaration out of doing something that you are so sure you couldn't do, and it just gives you kind of this power in the rest of your life that that giving up on things, you know, doesn't give you. I look at it from this, uh, as I look at comedians kind of like recording artists as far as performing. In front of audience, you gotta command that stage. No matter what what it is that you do, what you're performing, what you talk about, 
And as long, right. as, as, long as you command that performance, the, the audience, um, they'll hang on to every word. And you need to command it within the first 30 seconds of going up there. You know, I always go on stage with the idea in mind, I'm the most interesting thing going in this room. And if you're not paying attention to me, you're missing out. And that's what you want to project to them. You know, I mean, you want to be personable and likable, and you don't want to come off cocky, but you also you want to go up there with confidence and, and you know, demand, command the crowd's attention or you won't get it. So let's talk about this show this Sunday, Chicks with Mics. You will be there. Yes. As I pointed out, Natasha will be there. How did this show came about? Well, I've been producing comedy shows for a long time, and um, I, <clears throat> and I've been in comedy for a long time, and I've I've noticed, and like I think we all have, that they're just they're most comedy shows are mostly men, and they might have one spot for a woman, sometimes two, and a lot of times you'll see comedy shows that don't feature any women at all. So um, a lot of things happened over the past kind of year um, with. Um, first, Eddie Brill, the booker from The Tonight Show, coming out and saying that women aren't funny and aren't authentic um, and go on stage and act like men. And Adam Carolla coming out and saying that women aren't funny and they're mediocre and they shouldn't be hired in the writer's room. And just a lot of things um, that happened this year, the Daniel Tosh incident um, with the heckler and him, you know, um, saying wouldn't it be funny if I guys raped her right now. So I got the idea that I wanted to start a, an organization for women in comedy because I feel like comedy is very male, and I feel like we need a balance of male and female voices. I don't think we should have less male voices. I just think we should have more female voices. Um, there, You know, 51% uh, of humans are female, but only like 25% of comedians are female. So I just started an organization called Yin Comedy, as in Yin Yang, um, because I wanted to just promote female voices on the mic and female voices in comedy and just and women and, you know, men also. Um, so I uh, brought back this show I used to do a long time ago that I hadn't really thought much about lately, but it now just seems to me more important than ever to put on an all-girl comedy show of just hilarious women and just show that, you know, we're out there, we're out there in strong numbers, uh, we're, we're funny, you know, we have solidarity, we support each other, we're awesome. And it's a great show for people to go see when they, you know, and they get exposed to more than just one girl on the show or, or two women on the show. And it's just packed with the most hilarious women. Um, and I'm super, super excited about it. It will be taking place this coming Sunday. If you are in the Pasadena, California area, go check it out. It is an all female comedy show Bobby Oliver will be there and up and coming yeah, comedians will be there as well Sunday November Sunday November 4th Sunday November 4th at 9 o'clock p.m. in the Ice House Comedy Club main room um, the host is Sally Mullins who's just amazing um, she's incredible uh, she was just in the New York Post she's also been on MTV um, I'm gonna I'm headlining the show so I'll be there, and we have, if I could list real quickly the comedians, um, Natasha Young, Julia Brown, Hannah Michaels, Jamila, Susan Moore, I mean, sorry, Susan Ware, Valerie Chavez, Frankie Nichols, Haley Boyle, Amelia Barella, and Leah Wyman. So just a lot of really funny, funny women. I'm definitely happy to hear that a show like this is happening to show that females can be just as funny as the males are considering that comedy like a lot of things are mostly male dominant but there's females out there that can command the stage bring the funny and and and, get, and give people a good time so um I, I i definitely support this show and i and i and i hopefully wish that there's more females out there that you know that will give this comedy platform a shot because they just as funny mm -hmm. as, as the males are. Yeah, any you know, any girls that are listening to this, any women that are listening to this, whatever it is you're going through in your life, whatever you know, and th and this is not just the women, men too. 
Whatever it is you're going through in your life, pick up a pen, pick up a microphone, you know, express that. Whatever ideas you have, your voice is important. It doesn't matter what your point of view is. You might think, oh, I, I'm, I'm just like everyone else or I'm nothing like anyone else. It doesn't matter. You have your own point of view that's distinctive and it's important and your voice should be heard. Um, I also have an all-girl open mic now that I run the first Wednesday of every month at Eagle Rock in L.A. Uh, Dave's Chilled and Grilling. Um, and, I, you know, I, I started a comedy group called Ying Comedy. You can find us on Twitter at Ying, Y-I-N, Comedy, at Ying Comedy. And on Facebook, we have a, a Ying Comedy um, group, and we also have a Ying Comedy forum. So, And we welcome men and women. We love men. We love male comedians. Um, we just want to encourage more women um, to make their voices heard. Oh, and at the Eagle, I produced the Eagle Rock Comedy Festival, and this year, which is the first week of December in Eagle Rock, which is Los Angeles, and the, uh, this year we're having a Women in Comedy Roundtable. So we're going to have women um, from different aspects of comedy um, speaking and, and women in the audience asking questions, and we're going to discuss a lot of issues about um the challenges that women face in stand-up comedy. So I'm super excited about that, too. When you do your comedy routines, what are the topics do you like discussing the most? Well, I talk about whatever... Um, well, all my jokes are written about things that I'm reacting to, so they range from anywhere to my experiences with my family to things that are, you know politics, on the news, um, just, you know, anything at all. So I, I talk about anything and everything. Um, if, if there are a lot of things going on, I've been polit I've, I've been particularly political lately, obviously, because it's, you know, an election year and we're, we're uh, going up to the time that elect the elections. Um, Tuesday, November uh, 6th, please vote. Tuesday, November 6th. Um, another way to make your voice heard. And so there's a lot of things that have been coming out um, you know, rape issues and comments on, you know, things about abortion and, um, and birth control and stuff. So I've been po particularly political in talking about those issues lately because those are the things that are happening and because I feel like it's my job um, as a social satirist to make people aware of things that are happening in the news or politically that they may not know about. But I'm not necessarily a political comedian. I mean, I make jokes about my husband and my family and um, really anything that strikes me at the moment um, is what I want to talk about. And so should everyone else, not limit themselves to just one, you know, one tiny aspect of themselves that they blow up into a, into a comedy act. It should, it should have all aspects of yourself. You should express all sides of yourself. Oh, most definitely. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that, that there's comedians out there that's not afraid to speak on those matters regardless of Republican or Democrat uh, and, and still make it funny you know that's uh, that's that just shows versatility at least that's what I think um, a little bit earlier you mentioned heckling um, you being a comedian I'm sure you deal with hecklers at shows um, what's your thoughts on the hecklers and, and how do you how do you deal with that when when they won't stop. Uh huh. Well, I'm very lucky in that I don't get heckled very often. I actually don't believe heckling is happening that often. I think people who aren't in comedy think that every time somebody goes on stage, they're getting heckled. <laughs> a heckle just means that someone in the audience is verbalizing. So it does, it's not always mean spirited. Sometimes the person is just too drunk or having a really good time and doesn't know how to shut the hell up. Um, I feel like you have to be careful with hecklers because. If, the, if they haven't established themselves as a jerk to the audience and you go after them too soon, then the audience still feels like they're, the heckler's part of them, and they're like, well, why is she picking on us? So you have to let the heckler kind of establish themselves as a jerk. And I think you match the heckler's mood and intensity. So if the heckler is vicious and mean-spirited and intense, then you be vicious and mean-spirited and intense. But if the heckler's just drunk and just needs to be quieted down, there's no reason to rip them apart. Um, I, I try to remember that a heckler is a human being, and a lot of people say, well, you should say anything you want to a heckler. You can do anything you want. Yeah, you can. You can do whatever you want, but that doesn't mean you should. So I try to keep that in mind, and I 
you know, with the Michael Richard incident and with the Daniel Posh incident, I think you find that you you know you find out a lot about a, a person about a comedian when they're faced with a you find out a lot about a person when they're in a situation that makes them feel um, threatened. Um, and so if if you know with Michael Richards, I think you certainly learned a lot about him really fast, and Daniel Tosh too, although you might have done that already. Um, so I think how a comedian handles the heckler says a lot about them, the comedian. You know, so. Um, I just think that not every heckler, it should be a fight. Um, you can just quietly hush someone up with a little joke like, you know, well, I'm glad somebody observed the 10 drink minimum, you know, and then they realize, oh, sh I've been quiet. Or you know, they keep talking, say something like, oh, let's see, you think this is a conversation, isn't that cute? You know, and then they're like, oh, sh I should be quiet. And then if they just keep going, I mean, you, you match their level. So if they keep going and they won't shut up, then you, but you don't want to make your whole act about that, you know. A real, a good club will remove a heckler that won't shut up. All I know is them getting embarrassed by the comedians when they don't show up. That's good enough for me. I mean, they act like they want to be a part of the show when they really not crave for attention. You know, it's just it's very unfortunate. Everyone else just want to enjoy the show, and then there's one idiot in the well, audience. If you get to like a really intense heckler who won't shut up. <clears throat> that's a whole different matter than someone who just shouts out something once or is just, you know, talking to the comic but not being mean-spirited. Like, I don't think you, you should tear somebody apart um, if they're not being mean-spirited. I think you can shut them down without, you know, humiliating them. Absolutely. But I think everyone handles hecklers differently. I just try to think about if that's a person sitting there and not go too far until they go too far. Absolutely. Um, for more info on Bobby Oliver, you can check her out at www.bobbyoliver.net. Follow her on Twitter. One of the hilarious tweeters I've ever seen. Follow her at <laughs> follow her at the Bobby Oliver. Um, and. Bobby. Bobby spelled B-O-B-B-I-E. Yeah, B-O-B-B-I-E, Oliver. Um, follow her on Twitter. Check out the um, check out the Chicks with Mike show. Check out the other show she's already mentioned. And um, and, and you, from a fan standpoint, what's your thoughts on the state of comedy and where it's heading as of right now? Well, I think right now that... Um People are that people are taking things into their own hands a little more. So with technology, you're seeing more podcasts and web series, um, and people putting together their own sketch shows and putting them out there. Um, so I think comedy is just becoming more. Um, it's less about Comedy Central, and it's more about you know the individual comedians on Twitter and what they're the jokes they're putting out there and what's on YouTube and what. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a podcast called Psychedelic Assassin Radio. I have a web series called Saving Face that's coming out in November. So it's just about, you know, no matter where you are, you don't have to be in L.A. It doesn't matter where you are. If you have a camera, and even if you don't have a video camera, your phone might have a camera, a video camera on it, or you might can get one of those little still cameras and also have a video camera. It doesn't have to be this big, complex thing. Write something. Put a, point a video camera at something. Put it out there. But, you know, if you know, if you want to express yourself, you want to be funny. Um, don't sit around and wait for something to happen. Put it out there yourself. I definitely feel, you know, comedians like a lot of people are trying to expand themselves. It's just like any other form of entertainer. You know, they, you want to be more than one dimensional. At least that's what I think. Uh, and I, yeah, you mentioned the, the YouTube show, uh, which I think I saw. The, a snippet of it on YouTube or something like that. Talk a little bit about that show on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a show uh, featuring me and Sally Mullins, who's a hilarious comedian, amazing comedian. She's also my best friend. And it's a, it's a show about us. We're both 44. And it's about us, you know, as aging women in a business full of young men. And it's, it's just hilarious. It's about us getting dissed everywhere we go in Hollywood and the crazy things that happened to us and 
it's all real, it's all true, it's super trashy, very dirty, um, really funny, gritty and real, um, and it's got some behind the scenes of the comedy world in it, um, of what goes on backstage and, and, and the booking offices and stuff, and I think it's, it's interesting for people. Um, it's hilarious, plus it's also, you know, it's interesting. And uh, that will be coming soon on on YouTube. Be on the lookout for it. Um, my last and I'll put everything up on my I'll put up everything up on BobbyOliver.net and on my Twitter also. Again, that's BobbyOliver.net. Um, just check her out. More info on her shows, videos, clips, uh, everything else involving Miss Bobby Oliver. My last question for you is what would your advice be to anyone that wants to pursue their career as a comedian? What would your advice be? The first thing I would say is to get a joke notebook. So any kind of notebook, no matter how big or small, it could be a composition book or a nice journal. doesn't matter what it looks like. You just have to carry it around with you everywhere you go. And don't be like, yeah, I write all my jokes on my phone. I write all my notes on my phone. Yeah, that's fine for capturing some things. But you want to be able to flesh things out in a way that you really can't do on your phone. And plus, there's something about having a joke notebook with you, and, uh, you know, a, a notebook that you take with you to write your jokes in, uh, is what I mean by a joke notebook. Something about having that with you kind of signals the universe, hey, I'm ready. I'm ready to see the funny. And you start noticing things around you that you never really noticed before, and you write your ideas down. So get your ideas down. Write down everything. Don't judge it. Oh, that this is a dumb idea or a bad idea. Write everything down, and um, and it, get to an open mic. Find an open mic. Um, there's a good um, website called uh, www.badslava.com. B a d s l a v a dot com is a good website. There's also a, a, an open mic app you can get. Find an open mic in your area. Try your ideas. Um, um, it's not about the ideas coming out perfectly the first time because that's not the way jokes are written. Start the process. Start writing. Getting stage time. Um, I actually I teach. Uh, I run comedy workshops um, in in LA, and I've been I've been teaching comedy for nine years. I'm doing comedy for 24 years, and I have a book coming out uh, next year called The Dow of Comedy, which is Dow it's spelled T A O The Dow of Comedy. So look for that. But before it comes out, just, you know, get a joke notebook and don't wait. Just do it. Just trust in your voice and trust that it's going to grow over time and it's going to get better. Put in the 10,000 hours that it takes to master something and and don't wait. And don't let your fear stop you because it's never going to go away sitting on your couch. Bobby, I want to thank you for joining me for this interview. Great talking to you. Uh, again, checks with Mike's Pasadena, California Ice House this Sunday, just days before Election Day. Uh, and I do agree. Go out and vote if you're eligible, mm-hmm. of course. No matter who who you support, go out there and vote. Your voice does make a difference. Yes, and, it does. And that's probably the most political I'll ever get on these interviews and shows. <laughs> Considering I'm probably the most politically illiterate person on the planet, but I do pay attention. Uh, but thank you, Bobby, for joining me. Uh, best of thank success you. goes out to you, and have a great show this Sunday. You got any final words and shout outs? Thank you so much for having me. It was great to talk to you, and I hope I meet you one day in person. I definitely wish the same thing as well. And, uh, you know, I used to live in Georgia. You, you you was born in Georgia, so uh, got to support the folks. So got to support them. Right. Come to L.A. sometime and give me a holler. Oh, absolutely. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. This will conclude the interview.